Okay, so this is where I enter the spoilers. I guess I'll start with the, what some might call a nitpick. Why exactly did Lord Blackwood... I mean, at, there at the end, he just kind of leaps down from above. I don't have a problem how he got up there or how he got there in the time that they got up there. I, I can live with that, but why exactly was he waiting? I mean, was he just, like, sneaking into position to, or was he waiting to, so he could make the best entrance? Um, I don't know. That was a little bit, but that was also really the only thing that bugged me as such. I personally love the fact that it was all revealed to be, you know, science. It, it wasn't magic. I mean, I, when I watched the trailers and throughout most of the movie, until you saw the, um, the machine, you thought, I thought, that it was going to turn out to really be magic. I like that they, that there's that little hint of maybe there is something, you know, when, when he says, you know, you better hope it was just superstition because you did every one of those rituals, you know, picture perfect, so... And then, you know, the, the the chains around him and the big metal that smashes through and then he gets hung and you have to, you know, and it's up to the viewer to decide was that a coincidence or was that some kind of, you know, punishment. He dabbled in the black arts and now he's going to pay. You know, that, that was very, very good. I did kind of figure out that it was going to be Moriarty, um, you know, in the shadows, in... Um, in the horse-drawn carriage before the movie revealed it. But, you know, I, I, th I suppose if you're really, you know, if, if you go into the movie thinking Moriarty's going to be there somewhere, you're probably going to figure it out pretty much right away. Um, I, I don't know. I, I do think it, it was a very good setup. You know, the, the ending very much leaves room for, you know, him to come back in sequels. That's, as far as I understand, the plan that his role is going to increase in each movie and then, you know, a showdown between him and Holmes. And that sounds very exciting. Uh, I'm there. Uh, if they keep being this damn good, I'm definitely there. I like the way that the technology and such are believable. You know, I mean, when you watch Wild Wild West and know you don't have to go rewatch it in case you've forgotten it. There's a reason you forgot it, and if you haven't watched it, don't watch it. But, you know, in that, it's the stupidest stuff. It's, you know, I mean, some of the stuff is even inventions that we don't have today, but, yeah, you know, just... And it, it takes you out of it. If, if you can't suspend disbelief enough, and that's a lot of disbelief, then, you know, it takes you out of it. And that didn't really happen here. Here, it was, you know, you've got the the, um, uh, the thing that uh, Blackwood uses to, you know, radio waves to set off the the machine. That makes sense. That they could probably make that around that time. And, you know, you've got all these little hints at, you know, d this will be the future, this will be really big in the future, and, and stuff like that. That was really cool. I like the point about Blackwood trying to rule through fear. That's something we shouldn't forget, that that's a very effective tool. The nonlinear timeline worked really well with, you know, the stuff where first you see, um, you know, uh, Irene go to, um, um, go into the, the horse-drawn carriage, and, you know, you there's a beggar coming up and then he gets a gun pointed at him and he walks away then you find out Holmes followed her and the bum was actually him you know that was very very effective I, I thought the dredger was just awesome you know the at, at first you've just got these two guys and you know you think ah Holmes and Watson they're gonna take them out and two seconds flat you know and then one of the guys gets the, the smug you know, look and you know Dredger, and he comes and, you know, and just wails on Holmes, and Holmes like, just give me a few seconds, and then the guy responds in in French, you know, yeah, don't worry, I've, you know, I've got time. I also thought, for as many times as his adversaries, or, you know, P 
people in general underestimated Holmes. It never got boring to me. I thought the, the verbal comedy really fit, and it was hilarious. You know, I'm a huge fan of verbal comedy, so all of that was just all the little turns of phrases, you know, and when he's in the bed, and just all of that. Very, very funny. The dinner scene was really good because you knew from the get-go that Holmes was gonna do something, say something, and you were just sitting there waiting for it. And then, you know, it came and the the um, uh, wine or whatever uh, um, in his face, and then he just sits there and keeps on eating and just, in, in general, they they use the character well, they use the characters well, and their little quirks and such without it ever becoming gimmicky or annoying. Um, you never stopped liking the characters, you never got tired of the characters, and you, you could believe that these people exist, and you know, the, um, I, I thought that it, it was good the way, you know, without a case, Holmes was just going out of his mind because he needed something to solve, and, um, and then when he gets out of the house after, you know, being in the, that one room, you know, for like two weeks, he's just constantly looking all over the place, you know, uh, picking up little pieces of conversation and little details, trying to piece something together because he can't quit, he can't stop doing that. The fiancé character, in general, I thought she was good, you know, and, and the gradual change to liking Holmes more was pretty good. It was credible. This did a really good job of, you know, it, it felt like these were English people. Um, I don't know exactly how much of the cast, I mean, you know, not Downey Jr., and I think uh, McAdams is like Canadian, but apart from that, I think, you know, it seemed like a lot of them were really, you know, British, um, or English. It was, it was well done here, and that's not common for big budget films, you know, typically you've got you know, they sound like where they come from. Typically, it's America, but, you know, in general, they just, you know, why does the T-800 have an Austrian accent, you know? I think this did a good job of implementing, you know, adventure, action-adventure uh, elements and sequences without, you know, without them taking too much of the focus and without it being dumb, you know, it's... Um, it's a very smart movie with a very well thought out plot. But the the fights and you know the explosions and stuff, they you know, they added some excitement and such without taking the attention away from the overall mystery. I also like the the score, you know, a bit untraditional, but it it was fun and somehow it fit, you know, it, it wasn't distracting as such. I think that's about it. Um, see you next time.